I'm just um, updating that blog. The video linking to RT isn't um, isn't showing up. Um, it's rather annoying. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to do this because then I can concentrate. I won't pretend to look at it. Yeah. Few changes. How have you been? You've been up in Westminster, have you? Uh, with the uh, with, with 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 the number ten pantomime. Yeah. Do you know anything else about what I've been doing there? Have I told you anything? Uh, well, you sent me a copy of your mate with the odds board, and that's um, right. Uh, so no, I, we haven't spoken. Just been a couple of messages uh, on uh, Skype. <clears throat> yeah, brilliant. Um, I a few months ago, no, about a month ago, I went to a party that. Um, it was a birthday party. Someone who I know who works as a cameraman for RT. And I met somebody at that party who I've seen before in a Twitter mm -hmm. DM group for camera people. And I said to him, maybe we could do something. His name is William and he's on the books of a betting company called Star Sports. Uh -huh. So basically he streams or puts out you know, videos frequently saying what the latest odds are. Okay. He's into, he's into the horses, but he also does other sports. And I think a few years ago, he was always telling his bosses about Westminster. And then I said, okay, fine, just go down there and start setting the odds. So maybe he was there for the run up to Boris coming in. What, what was he actually taking bets? No, he doesn't have a license to take bets uh, in person. Uh, there is a shop in Mayfair that he refers people to, but they are online. So, oh right, people so people can bet online. online if they see his odds board. They can go online on their phone. Yeah, it's a brilliant example of what you said about in the real world, in real mm. life. Mm. Um, and and so it was brilliant for me because it was, I mean, to be at a real punch and duty show, as you, you know, i.e. Westminster, mm. and to be there with a board, and you know, it's not my board. I don't set the odds. I was literally the other person. So I, I took my camera with me, but I used his phone mm -hmm. to film him and then put the streams out. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, he did all the editing and all the, you know, but he just needs someone else to film him. Oh, right. So, well, I, I, I haven't seen the video. I don't think you sent me a link. You just sent me the photograph of. of uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, of course, I, I made the picture bigger and looked at the odds and I was flabbergasted to see Ben Wallace on there. Uh, but of course, I, I, I saw that that there was a poll on Conservative Home, which obviously is, um, you know, regular Conservative Party members that read that website. And so obviously they're. Um, they're impressed by his work on the Ukraine thing. So, you know, I, I, I think they're, um, in, that they're being impressed is misplaced personally. Um, but that, that's why that's there and how long that will last, I don't know, or whether they'll allow him to go forward. I really don't know either. Because um, I, I was talking to someone the other day and my view was that there are three possible outcomes. The last two runners will be um, Rishi Sunak against um, Jeremy Hunt. OK, and uh, the, th the wild card is if the Labour Party are serious about a vote of no confidence. Right. I think we could see um, the advent of a sort of an interim um, coalition government between Labour and the Tories as a caretaker government up to the next election to get through the crisis. And I think the head of that government would be David Davis. Now, the, the point being that there's a kind of a coalition of the spooks, and I think David Davis is part of that. Obviously, Keir Starmer is. Um, 
I don't think Boris Johnson was ever let into that inner circle because he's too much of a loose cannon. Um, and uh, the national interest aspects of what's happening in the financial system, I think are being driven by the security state establishment over anything else. I think Liam Fox is, uh, uh, you know, and the Home Secretary type people, because the, the role of the Home Secretary is greatly underestimated. Uh, but Home Secretaries have had a massive influence on our politics since 9-11. Well, obviously, and previously, but, but particularly in the 21st century. Um, and they have been diluting the what they call populism, which I would call the democratic aspect of uh, the British Constitution or the English Constitution. Constitution it is English law, it's not British law. Um, and uh, that I think is where we're at um, in that I think the BBC are pushing for less democracy. They, they ran a story the other day saying, you know, in Arab nations, polls are showing that people think that democracy weakens the economy. Uh, this is the this is the general, you know, the idea of authoritarianism and a one nation state and fascism. OK. Um, so in terms of what I would see the race as being, OK, it's it's how managing the transition to an authoritarian, uh, overtly authoritarian um, model, right? Obviously, I think that will fail and I don't think they should win, but that's the next step coming down the pipe and how will they best achieve that? And I think, I mean, obviously they, they've been quite happy to drag the office of prime minister and various other political institutions through the mud um, since the Brexit vote. I mean, you know, um, so and they've done the same in the United States as well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, so the old sport, I looked at it with interest. Um, uh, obviously, there are a lot of people that are putting their names forward, you know, and you can only describe them as Walty Mitty characters, I think, a lot of them. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's, it, anyway, that was the when I was talking to a friend the other day, um, that that was my reaction to the whole pantomime of the Boris thing, because, you know, um, I, all down to the stage managed backstage photographs of Boris holding, you know, okay. giving Carrie a kiss and, you know, holding up young Wilfred and all this sort of thing. Yeah, so it, it's bizarre. I Did you read um, Lloyd sketches in The Spectator? Uh, I haven't, no. Well, they're worth a read, but I mean, obviously, that was before he actually resigned. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I sent you a, my comment on that. I, mean, I, I put it in a blog as well. But um, Oh, brilliant. So Lloyd, who knows all these people intimately. Well, he was he was at Balliol with, 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 with Warren. Yeah. And worked for him at The sta uh, Spectator. Yeah. I, I thought... Um, uh, the comments of um, Gove were hilarious, you know, that, that his ex-wife published in the whatever, wherever she writes, where he, you know, um, you know, his one line is to Boris saying, well, I think it's actually you are the one that should be moving on or it's time to stand down. And then he said, you know, well, what else do you do when you've been sat? You have a have a have a slice of salami and a glass of wine. I mean, he's such a laconic. I, I mean, what, I think he is. What, what, he, Gove, he is funny. Gove, Gove Gove is, uh, he, he, he's great. But he is very amusing. Well, he makes me laugh anyway. I, I do think he's uh, he's very witty. Yeah. So I never read. So his wife. That's in his wife's piece. Yeah. Well, I, I haven't read the actual piece, but it's quoted. It's on the BBC news feed. You know, they 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 reported it. Yeah, because I remember noticing that his wife had written the, you know, the front page for the Daily Mail and it said something like, what have they done? That was the headline. And then it said by Sarah Vine. I remember thinking, 
okay, this is the woman who intended to be living at number 10. So, yeah, I mean, it's so interesting, isn't it, the way all of those relationships work, mm. you know? I, so I, I, it, 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 it's a reality TV show at the moment. Grand Gen. I mean, that's what it is. And, and it's a low budget reality TV show at that. So um, looking beyond the, the pantomime, the reality TV, you, you, you've got to delve rather deeper into how the establishment really works. And um, that that conversation we had on the 14th of December, which I've rewatched this morning, uh, where we're talking about what, right, what is the direction of flow where's the momentum taking us uh, and again that that that's the question um i yesterday at the end of uk columns extra time they started talking about oh they're going to be more lockdowns they're going to try this they're going to try that Ooh. and um I, I i basically said i think that's that that's kind of missing the point i i don't think that there's um there's nothing to be gained from doing that the, the momentum is it, in the same way that i think the second lockdown was a was a strategic mistake if you have the objectives in mind that the establishment has had of the last few years which is a transition to uh it is a transition to a sort of social point system that's what it is uh and, and it's uh it, basically it it, it, it it's a transition to patronising money, i.e. money that is linked to good behaviour. That's, you know, that's what Ardha is and is becoming. And it still vexes me that, that still no one is talking about Ardha. That is the model. You mm. know, people say, oh, well, they're doing this in China, they're doing that in China. Ardha is the, 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 the model and a media group, Gates, Infosys, Rushy Sinak's fa father-in-law, for goodness sake, who's in the running for the leadership. I mean, that, that's another reason why he's got to be, you know, he's got to be the favourite for coming out the other side. But it's really how that interim goes. When are they going to put their, when are they going to put their, their glory boy into position where they expect them to actually have a long stint at the wicket? Yeah. You know, at the moment, it's a caretaker batsman, isn't it? Overnight. Well, he, he, yeah, he put his video out yesterday um, and people said on Twitter, you know, I saw people commenting on it and then I watched it and people said, this is not a video that was shot overnight. This is a video uh, that, you know, that took a while to make, la di da um, Then uh, Nadeem Sahawi, I don't know if he's... I don't know if he's declared yet, but people say that he's been working with Linton Crosby. Um, well, uh, Crosby's interesting in in in, in the back behind all of this, but he he he's more a Borisite, isn't he? I would have thought. I, I mean, he, yeah, he and Boris, Boris, I think, because well, 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 he got gone. Boris into the mayorship and what have you. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, yeah, yes, I realise that, but Zawahi and Boris are by. Zahawi's account linked at the hip. How true that is or not, I really don't know. But, you know, he said, oh, my friend of 30 years. I mean, were they at Oxford together? I don't know. Hmm. I don't even, I don't uh, know no much idea. about Zahawi at all. Um, but the, there, there will be stalking horses. Of course there will be. But it's do they still need another sort, sort stalking hat horse while the other pieces are attempted to be put in place? Yeah. Or okay. or will people wake up and actually realise, right, what we've got to do is vote tactically and cram the House of Commons with critical independent thinkers that are there for the basically with the uh, best interests of, of the people and the nation at, at heart, rather than the narrow interests of in groups within the establishment. And that that you know, and we—that's the place we've been at. Right. Well, put it this way: we've been—we've been at that place at least since 2010. But I would argue that we've been at that place. Um, if you rewatch the debate between David Cameron, Cameron and David Davis for the 2005 leadership debate and what they're talking about then, 
right? Here we are 17 years later, very little else has changed, very little's changed, except the things that David Davis voiced concerned about then, i.e. civil liberties or, or, or liberties in, under the Constitution, have continued to be further eroded. So that's, that's the cleavage between the factions in the establishment. And, you know, I think David Davis is uh, a safe pair of hands uh, for the faction of the establishment that I personally would identify with, which is basically, uh, you know, real business in the real economy, the industrial capitalists. You see what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I think uh, whereas um, Starmer's a crony capitalist, I, I would say that Sunak is a crony capitalist, uh, certainly a financialized capitalist, um, and 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 you know that's a that's an interesting distinction: crony capitalism versus financialized capitalism. You know, if you want to call it that, or or, or you know, a mixed mixed economy capitalism, which is more industrial capitalism, certainly than financialized capitalism. I mean, financialized capitalization, uh, capitalism did fund the rise of Hitler, you know, Prescott Bush and all of that. Mm. You know, not everyone in the establishment is a fascist, not everyone in the security services is either. You know, that, that that's a, a hopelessly naive point of view. And the fact that there's this bun fight going on up there, or behind the curtain, as it were, um, it just seems to, so the end of UK column yesterday, I kind of thought, oh, well, that's a bit naive, uh, whereas the end of the one on Wednesday that they had a very, very good uh, conversation, you know, which, which I, um, so anyway, what was, it about? What, what was it about? Uh, well, on Wednesday, they were making a point about, hold on, let me just wind back my memory. Um, um, there were t it was energy policy and, 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 and um, how the energy policy side of things were really what were driving the Ukraine thing. Um, I, I, which chimes for me with all of my ideas about the, uh, you know, the, the quasi, you know, an oil based gold standard or an energy based gold standard with carbon trading and all of that sort of thing. But but their conversation clearly was pointing towards, you know, what I think is the correct analysis as to what this has all really been about. And when I say all this has really been about is is Boris resigning, being moved sideways, all the rest of it is part of a much bigger direction of travel to do with the energy currency. Well, well, it's it's to do with world governance and what are the compartments of governance. Uh, uh, below an overarching concern for international trade, but international trade based around petrodollar hegemony, which isn't really just about the US. It's, you know, the, the Bank of England and the Fed are joined at the hip, you know, the ECB. I, I, ha, the, the dynamic of all of that is incredibly complex, right? And energy is absolutely built into that mix um so yeah i mean that and, and clearly ukraine is um key to the belt and road and, and uh, yeah i mean it's um i mean the thing is you can watch the extra time from wednesday on the uk column website it's it, it's kind of up on on, on the website um uh, but that's only for members of UK column. Though. So, yeah, um, you know, again, my criticism of the news cycle is this. The news cycle has got absolutely no meat in it. 
you know, where's the beef? There is none. You know? Well, I wanted to say to you, actually, that it's as a result of our conversations that it was so much easier for me to handle being where I was over the last. I mean, I didn't go there yesterday, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, I mean, it's a, you know, in some senses, it's a remarkable set of coincidences that led me to be there. But, uh, you know, and I wasn't playing much of a role. He's going to pay me for what I did. Uh, not loads by anyone's standards, but, you know, more than I expected. Yeah, well, you know. that's great. It's, you know, it was great. I mean, I, it was great to see you down, you know, to see the photo. I, I will watch the video. If you send me a link, I'd love to watch it and see see what's being said. Um, but um, it's... <sighs> <coughs> We're obviously at an interesting juncture, <coughs> um, but I think I, I think people surely must be thinking a little more deeply about it at this point, um, and and encouraging people to consider the fact that this has all played out actually with the same cast. Uh, you know, yeah. in 2000 and, uh, you know, 2000 and uh, Cameron resigned. So that one, then May got appointed, then May resigned, then Boris got appointed, etc. Then there was hold, the hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry to interrupt your point. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a separate point, but just on the part of the pantomime thing, you know, even the whole thing of the way May got appointed, you know how quickly that happened and it was a runoff between two because that's how it works so a runoff between two so what they're saying at the moment is they want the new leader in by september mm -hmm. and i saw something say that they want the runoff completed by july 21st when i say they some people say they want not the runoff they want to decide who the two are by july 21st and apparently they can who's they who's, yes exactly. who, good point who, who is your yeah. they yeah, no, good point. So what I understand is because I said, well, what are the rules again? Because, you know, this stuff happens, you know, often so quickly and it's who against who. So, for example, who did Boris run against? Can you remember? Uh, I mean, who it, was the final? It, 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 it was Jeremy Hunt. Ah, that was the final uh, round. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and then there was the debate where they were Rory thingy, you know, the. Yeah, they were all there, weren't they? Yeah. Rory yeah. of Arabia. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. With the opium. Jarvid yeah. was there. Jarvid yeah. was there. Gove was there. Hunt was there. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember Jarvid said, oh, yeah, we have to have an inquiry into Islamophobia and all this kind of stuff. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because the longer there is any sort of a race with more people in, the more likely it is that somebody might say something that... Um, you see, that I don't... Affects... Will, will that happen or not? Because obviously... the. 1922 committee are still meeting early next uh, week and that's a good point we'll yeah they, want to, avoid the having, yeah, they and, want to avoid having a television debate with like five people on don't they that's the last thing they well, agreed I, unless it's rigged look think of the days okay there's the there's the there's the tory party membership okay there's the labor party uh there is the the, the Tory party grandees, okay, uh -huh. right? There's the um, the Tory party at Westminster. I mean, there, there are several factions with all of that. And then there's also the, there's the foreign office and then there's MI6 and MI5, okay? Okay. Right, so obviously you've got Ukraine going on at the moment. Yeah. Right. And you've also got inflation's very high and the financial nuts and bolts, which that's what I, you know, I, I, I that's what I think the response to the 1922 season was all about and the 2021 one. Okay. I, you know, I, 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 I'm pretty fixed on that. I, 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 I don't think there's really, there can be really be much doubt about that. It was about a lot more than public health. It was about the the health of the financial power structures, which are inherent in the G7 and G20 combinations of 
financial interests internationally you know yeah so, um so uh what's coming down the pipe with that you know so mark said well you know it's, it's it, you watch some of his his talk the talk he gave at the um atlantic council which is up on my bit shoot channel which he gave several years ago that there's there's a lot going on okay which has to be managed or or stage managed through the window of number 10 downing street and what that means symbolically of looking after our democracy so there are a number of contradictions uh to do with the mythology of what our political economy what our democracy is right okay now obviously that's they've consistently undermined that and insulted that ideal consistently uh well consistently since since 1973 when ted heath took the uk into the common market again david davis's 2005 debate with with cameron it it it, it, it it's 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 crucial i think to to look at that and see which issues still remain un, undecided, which are still open questions, which can still still be openly questioned now, which which they haven't managed to get into in, in, into what room one hundred and one. Uh, security uh, measures and civil liberties as against uh, the war on terror, terror, the the Iraq war. And, and and being taken to the Iraq war on false information um, and uh, you know all the basically right. it's, it's all, all the same stuff I mean uh, like I said but I mean, it's easy enough to find the video you'll find it on my blog I've, I've blogged yeah. about it in the last few days but if you watch it it's only an hour long and you get a sense of of, of, of what Cameron was all about and what Davis is all about, you know, mm. they're, they're being very nice to each other, but they are fundamentally different. And and the thing is, Boris wasn't so fundamentally different to David Cameron. They probably had exactly the same view about Europe as well. If you yeah. think about it, you know, That's Boris believable. is famous to, you know. Um, so so it's it. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but as I say, I, I think it will be between those three things, a caretaker, joint prime minister, a coalition to avoid a general election. A, or it will be Sunak if they think that they've made enough progress and the social points and all the Sunak stuff, his father-in-law stuff, the Aadhaar stuff is safe to unveil. Uh, or Hunt as another disposable um hobby horse stalking horse so you know that th they'll put hunt up as a disposable you know i think he is disposable from their point of view mm. okay go caretaker coalition sunak hunt mm, that's um, my view uh, yeah, what if, can i tell you what sorry you were saying mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a whole list of other people and all the rest of it, but I, I mean, anyone well, I, could anyone could serve the purpose of the stalking horse, but I think another stalking horse uh, <laughs> is only appropriate if they really do think, well, we're going to continue to take the piss out of democracy because it really doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, but even then, it would be better to do it for a reason, you know, because the thing that they really want is. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's easier to achieve that yeah, way. Yeah, that that is a the reason for doing that is it provokes the cognitive dis, d dissonance. It keeps, oh, yeah. it keeps the uh, it keeps the gullible discombobulated. Yeah, 
which is never a bad idea if you have their mindset yeah 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 well i mean just to show you evidence of or to relate evidence of that discombobulation um when i mean it's really something you know what you said about in real life about how you can't beat it for so many different things to walk around westminster with an odds board so William's just walking around with the board. Mm. William's uh, of Ghanaian extraction. He's a big guy and he's always in a you know, good suit. Um, but, you know, his competition when it comes to walking around with boards around there are people saying the end is nigh, you know, yeah. Jesus mm-hmm. and everything like that. So it's brilliant in that. So I asked him, I mean, I haven't read too much about him if he's ever heard of Kenneth Arrow. Because I understand Kenneth Arrow was the guy, you know, who talked about the visualization of risk, you know, you know, actually stripping out the components and saying, oh, this is the risk here. This is the risk there. So just so funny for people to actually see a board with the odds, Mm -hmm. whether they agree with them or not. And immediately opinions are like assholes. So suddenly Mm -hmm. people are going to say, you know, what are you talking about? Or I fancy this and la di da. So so it's absolutely brilliant when I, I sent him a... I think on our second or he may have been basically I sent him a screenshot of Penny Mordor in the Times uh-huh. saying that she was the favorite. And then he said, thanks for the heads up. By the time I saw him. They had her as the favorite. And I thought, how could everyone have her as the favorite at the same time? Because and I didn't realize I couldn't quite tell because I just thought it was strange. But he gave really good reasons. So when when I was asked, because obviously I'm by the board, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think at one point I said, because you look at the list, and I just said, white woman, like that. It's just a, just an answer. Uh, and then the, the, the response I got was Liz Truss. Um, so essentially people saying, you know, if you want a fully qualified white woman to be prime minister, then you really want to go for Liz Truss because she's already foreign secretary, uh, etc. You know, not on the merits. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I... I haven't w- looked at his comment in the resignation, but the Cardiff MP that, that cracked the joke about Incatatus uh, it, it, when, when Boris was appointed as as as, uh, as foreign secretary, he said it's similar to, you know, um, Caligula appointing his consul, uh, his horse consul. The horse. Right. Yeah. Incatatus. Now, okay, <laughs> I, I mean, Rich, so... so you know, you, you've got a, a gelding or a stallion and a filly. You know, I mean, it's <laughs> it, it could could quite equally make the same thing. The thing about that Welsh MP is he's also in that band, the cross party band. So I, I quite like him. But, I've never know, heard of him. I don't know anything about them. Um, I I'll tell you what he's called. Um, but he did. He, I, 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 I got the david davis question off and i saw that he had actually asked a question um but uh hold on where are we uh well, what, what i wanted to say was that um you know i said white woman about penny border and people said this trust and so i think some of the data was coming from YouGov, and yeah. you know other polls and that sort of thing but what's so funny is when people say oh yeah um you know i what, the way in which they say that they agree or disagree with who's on the board and what the odds are, because, you know, it's a mix of I fancy, I like and that yeah. type of thing. And actually, I saw Evan Davis. I went up to him and I said to him, he was just trying to get on his Boris bike out of, out of there. And I said to him, you will come over here and you will look at the odds and you will tell me what you think. Yeah. Uh, and, and he said he's very he's very thin. Um, and he said, uh, oh, I've just been looking at the odds on the radio. And I said, you will look at our odds. Um, and so he comes over, yeah, <laughs> looks at the odds. And of course, because he looks at the odds and he knows that they're completely meaningless, he, he looks at me and he actually gave an intelligent answer, one which obviously he would never say on the radio. Um, he said, the thing is uh, that people have a big problem distinguishing between who they like mm-hmm. and uh who is likely to be voted in by the conservative party members there you go you know. yeah um well it's really amazing point. that that you know that you found him and that he was prepared to do that yeah i never filmed him doing that i thought that would be bad form 
Um, who are the other people I saw? I saw Robert Buckland. Um, I went up to him and I said, he's the former justice minister. I said, don't you think you ought to be on this list? And he kind of gave me a smile. Um, John Whittingdale, again, I got him to look at the odds. I didn't photograph him. Some of these other yeah. people. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm also interested in this idea of uh, whether there'll be a televised debate, how many people, you know, would or wouldn't be. And I think your point about uh, how quickly you want to, you know, about if you want to undermine the feeling in democracy, then you'll put more people mm. there uh, with stalking horses who don't have a chance and stuff like that. It, it, to confuse. It, uh, yeah. I mean, you've got to think of the tactics of it and what is the objective. And yeah. You know, um, so if objective number one is to confuse, then I'm, I mark you totally right. Well, I mean, you know, I mean that's a secondary consideration that doesn't do any harm. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, a, 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 an added bonus. There, yeah, things are already quite good for them in that um, the only people that are really going to put themselves forward are already in the Tory party. So they've already yeah. had massive betting already, haven't they? Mm. You know, there's, there's not that many loose cannons in there. I mean, I, I can't even believe I'm saying it like this. I mean, this is what was so funny also. Being in Westminster, people saying this, that and the other. And I'm thinking, are you a Tory member? In which case, I don't even want to listen to you talking because, you know, I'm not, you know, it's just, I, you're, yeah, anyway, I just, I have a problem with you already. Um, uh, do you know, I mean, it, I, 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 I kind of don't feel the same way about that, you know. I mean, I, whether they're Labour, whatever, if they choose to be in a, a, a member of a political party, that's great. What, what's actually important is uh, whether or not they realise that any sort of higher ideals that they cherish in taking that action are under threat by this whole process. And, and so, so on Off Guardian, for instance, they, they put up a very sort of almost nihilistic kind of, oh, well, you know, pay attention if you want to. We just think it's all a, a bunch of pants, as it were. Uh, and I, I mean, I responded in, in the sense that, well, actually, the and this is a David Davis point, you know, about civil liberty. He, he said, you know, our, our, the way things are done in this country, it's a thousand years old. It's evolved over a thousand years. It's a system that's been bequeathed to us by our ancestors. And, you know, people have struggled to, to get where we're at, you know, and it's it, it's it's evolved across um, a thousand years. And of course, the last 200 years of that as well, there's also the broader Commonwealth. And so there's a huge it means something. The British Constitution and common law means something for the wider Commonwealth family of nations and peoples. You know, we, we, we're all wedded to that common law, which has ideals of freedom and liberty, which live in the Indian Constitution. They live in the Pakistani constitution. The Pakistani constitution is absolutely incredible. I don't, if you've ever read it, it, it's really worth reading, right? Ha, you know, again, with all constitutions, like the American constitution is very good as well. The fact they choose to ignore it. But that that's really important. I think, and, uh, I think uh, the, the, these are really, really visceral, elemental points which I, I i love it i love it when you get all constitutionalist on my ass um <laughs> and, and i'm gonna say that because you know i don't watch you doing this to other people and that's cool uh you know because i learned from this uh at the same time um i think one you know a huge thing that we have in common is that we are both very interested in this and we're both attempting not to get sucked into the noise aspect of it mm -hmm. uh so that 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 brilliant then when it comes to believing all of this I am not anywhere near as over the line as you are in terms of, uh, you know, I will pick up arms and fight for the Queen, you know, and, and any other number of things I could list if I wanted to, but I don't hold them in my head. Um, so, um, you know, but obviously we both want the best for as many people as possible around us. Uh, and, and that's fairly indiscriminate, I think, in, 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 in you. Yeah, the, the, the like point is, it's, it, it, it's the office of Queen, it's the office of, of Prime Minister. Mm. So it, in, in that committee, um, where, where there was a Labour MP asked him a, quite an angry question about the figures, 
right? And she sort of says, uh, you know, I, I, I still have respect for the office of prime minister and i.e. I don't respect you, but it, it's like saluting an officer in the army. Oh, you see. don't salute the officer, you salute the uniform. Now, that I, stuff mean, that's a structure which means something. I mean, I'm an anarchist, right? But those structures are, are to do with communities, bot, even bottom up societies. They have now, structures speaking, and speaking, institutions. Speaking of bottom up, um, may I tell you something? I shall tell you where I got it from later. Um, there was a rumour that um, Boris is going to be making uh, that chap, that MP who uh, was in trouble a couple of weeks ago, uh, Christopher Pincher. Yeah. Um, there was a rumour, I, I think Boris is going to be putting him in the House of Lords. What? You've got to be kidding. And he will be called... <laughs> He will be called Lord of the Flies. <laughs> OK, good. It's a joke. Thank God. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you, can I tell you when and where I got that one? Yeah, that was that was this is terrible. Now, isn't it? now that we're sharing, uh, that was delivered to me by uh, the right honourable Rod Heisler uh, on Tuesday. <laughs> And, and after he said it, and obviously I recorded the conversation and he does it with perfect timing as well. There's a little gap between, you know, everything. Um, yeah. But then after he said it, he said to me, you know what, Rajan, you know how I got that one? I got that one because Peter Brook had just died. And Peter Brook's one of his great things was directing Lord of the Flight. So he said it was handed to me on a plate. So I'm sorry to lower the. Uh, <laughs> just yeah. lower the general's mm -hmm. ban. Yeah. Yeah. Right, anyway, I'd better shoot off. One last coincidence. Mm. Um, at the Oxfam that I occasionally volunteer at, somebody said to me, uh, my, you know, my supervisor there, uh, who has an allotment, she said to me, why don't, you, why don't you write a book called Rental Slavery? See if they let you get away with that. And do you think that it's possible to do something like that without being bumped off? Do you remember uh, the advert that I made for home? Of course, I, 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 yeah. I, cited, I, cited it, I cited it immediately you know, without, yeah. you know, without, you know, I, I said, actually, my friend got into trouble by some of his. Oh, yeah, upset. I, I was amazed. It really you know? upset a lot of people. Yeah. And we both had a laugh to say, you know, his point was not to trivialize something, but in fact, say that it's, you know, various versions of that, you know, the yeah. suffering still right here affecting people who suffered under that and now you know all whose ancestors did so yeah i mean we, we got what you were saying yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah there we are free yourself well, from you... mental slavery you know that's yeah, the, it was the bob marley song redemption just... song sure 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 so just last bit of good news is that um yeah so i told you my friend danny asked me to film something last week and therefore i pulled out my camera and that was what prompted me. That was part of what prompted me to call William. I called William on Tuesday saying, I want to film you and maybe do something mm -hmm. with you because I just figured he doesn't have enough attention on him. So He's where's really the video? Where, where? Oh, I'll find them. They're on the, they're on the betting website. Uh, as in, okay. they're on the betting Twitter. I mean, there was one point where we were walking down the street. Somebody from the SNP was there and the SNP MP's assistant knew William. So yeah. I said, uh, well, can we film you? We were opposite Downing Street the day before Boris went. Yeah. And the, the SNP MP said, yeah. And then there's this really lanky SNP MP called Chris Law. who was walking the other way. Uh, and I knew he was SNP. So I, I, he was even probably started saying hello to his colleague. Yeah. And I said, would you both like to tag team this one? And so they did. And it was brilliant. So on one level, their accents were so Scots as to be incomprehensible. On the other, you know, you could get what they were yeah. saying. And um, one of them said, Chris Law, who told me that he's an anthropologist and he used to be a filmmaker and he's also mm. sold mortgages. He told me that, well, he told the, you know, he, he said during the film, it's interesting that Nadim Sahawi is the new chancellor. And then he said, because, of course, he was subject to a National Crime Agency investigation. Uh, and, uh, you know, surely that will prevent his chances from running as prime minister or even being a good chancellor. And then the other MP, brilliant, classic, you know, 
you know, stand up timing, he comes in and he goes, although, you know, you have to say onto this Tory party, you know, that would surely be a brilliant qualification to yeah. you know, get <laughs> stuff like that. So I just thought it was brilliant. You know, we didn't play to a big enough audience. Yeah. Well, send me the links. I'd be really fascinated to. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm generally I'm good. Oh, and one last thing. Sorry. Mm. Uh, whilst I was there, um, old boy, I did actually have my own camera there, which, you know, as I said, I haven't uh, wheeled out for ages. Mm -hmm. So uh, opportunism was going to strike at one moment or the other. Guess who walked past me at one point? Lord Prem Seeker, uh, who's uh, obviously got put in the laws by Corbyn and McDonnell. You know, he's the he, he you know, he's done stuff with you know, tax, basically. Um, and I said to him, I'd been wanting to get him for ages and given up uh. and forgotten about it. I've spoken to him on the phone before and I've met him before. He's really nice. Uh, I said, you know, should we go? You know, is that cool? You know, he said, yeah, I've got five minutes. Uh, and he gave me about 11 minutes. Um, I've, I'm just putting the subtitles on it now. So yeah. I'm going to put it uh, as tweets, but also on YouTube. Um, cool. what, it yeah. comes, what, it comes out, what it comes out with is good. You know, you'll like good it. One. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Did you ring the producer at GB News? No. Just but to what, reestablish, because, I mean, you've got some really good stuff there, you know. Yeah, it's true. Um, because I would sell it to them for hardly anything as well. You yeah, know? well. Yeah, exactly. And don't undersell yourself, mate. You know, it's. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, it sounds, like, sounds like you've been on a real roll and all the rest of it. And it's kind well, of, you know, it's, it, it's more interesting than. I mean, I've watched a bit of GB News. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really like Liam Halligan. And so I like some bits of it. Sure. But, but, but their, their general news programme is, uh, I don't know, it's not really my kind of thing. Yeah, no, their game needs a bit of upping, that's for sure. Mm. Uh, I, um, so William originally said to me something like, oh, I normally pay people about £10 an hour. And so on the end of the first night, um, I said, how about 50 quid? Uh, and he said, he said, oh, yeah, OK. The second day I'd done more than the five hours. And he said, how about a ton? And I just thought, fuck it, man. I want to keep this going. It's fine. And then at the end of the third day, in which I'd done quite a few, uh, I sent him a message, or, you know, yesterday saying, um, how about 200 for those three days? Um, and I nearly said, oh, you know, I probably did however many hours. My mate advised me against that. So I just said, how about 200? And uh, he said, yes, well earned. So yeah. I'll get that in the next week. So it was nice. Cool. For me yeah, to that's brilliant. To go yeah. And do something. Cool. Yeah, nice world. one. Brilliant. I'm flying into the UK next Thursday. We, we're in Wales on a holiday, and um, but I'm we'd be there for a bit later. I'll be over for about three weeks, so we'll have to hook up. Um, uh, yeah, lovely. yeah, yeah. So I, I will be seeing you in the next few weeks, I'm sure. Um, okay. So great. Yeah, look forward to a beer and. You mentioned going to a bookshop. Uh, there are a couple of things we've talked about going to have a look at. So it'd be nice to. I, I remember when we went to the World Cup and we had our nice sort of, you know, drink yeah. at the barbican and then we had a lunch on the, you know, whatever. It'd be nice to sort of. Uh, yeah, will you be with the whole family in London? Everybody's coming over to, to Wales. I, whether we all go up to London on a day, I doubt it. I, I You know, it, it's. We, we've got a week down on the west coast of Wales. Then yeah. we got a week up my mum and my sisters near Cardiff. Yeah. And then me, Rasmus and Rhianne are staying on for a few days after uh, Johanna and Nova come back. They, they're coming back a bit earlier than us. So, okay. but, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, so, so I, we haven't planned the second week yet when we could all decide to have a day trip in London, I guess. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, okay, anyway, good. Well, yeah. Talk to you soon. Nice one. Cheers, Ranjan. Take care. Bye. Bye.